So it's time to lean in, grab your pens, your notebook, your favorite beverage as you prepare for this conversation. And I want you to see yourself in the story. Scripture was written for you. And we're going to walk through chapter six and we're moving beyond the noise, overcoming interruptions and disruptions. Beyond the noise, even in the midst of ruin, chaos, it's all behind us. And the reason you're smiling is because you already see the victory. It's assured. So whenever you see me do this, that means lean in. So if you hear something that's relatable, drop it in the com comment section. If you hear something that you believe someone else needs to hear, tag them, tell them to get on the stream, let them know. I pray that you've already shared it. I pray that you've already uh, subscribed to this channel, liked the video, the stream, because that lets Facebook and YouTube know that this is worth sharing. Then they open up the floodgates and they let other people in to see it. We're going to have some fun today as I conclude this series. And I've tagged today's message beyond the noise. We'll walk through Nehemiah 6 like we do or have done from chapter 1. I shared with our prayer group Took Nehemiah 52 days to build a wall. Seemed like we've been in this book long enough to build a wall. <laughs> but nevertheless, we did it both in person and online. Beyond the noise. <laughs> Overcoming interruptions and disruptions. We know the word of the Lord is already blessed. Praise God. <laughs> Life. Life's journeys. I'm discovering. Are filled with two. I would say culprits. Most of our lives are either filled with unfinished projects or unfulfilled dreams. Y'all ain't leaning in already. Our lives, most of us, we either have unfinished projects on one hand or unfulfilled dreams. We start with enthusiasm, but somehow, Shay, we, we lose steam along the way. I want to drop a pen early in this message. Did you know that every significant achievement in life requires perseverance and dedication? Mm, nobody dropping any notes. If you're going to make it through anything, you're going to need perseverance and you're going to need dedication. And scripture celebrates not just those who start well and start strong, but those who finish strong. And I want to pass the finishers. Ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to be the one who can step back and just celebrate and, and cheer because, you know, it started rocky and you wanted to give up. You wanted to throw in the towel, but you stuck with it. You kept chipping away. You kept doing the things that needed to be done in the midst of what's going on 
and you finished. I want a pastor finishes. Because it's few of them. Why do you think that, that so many of us struggle to cross the finish line? Talk to me. And whatever the finish line may be, you all, I'm thinking, we, we, we have this excitement uh -huh, that, 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 that's often coupled with a, a new beginning, but it often fades the moment we face challenges, the moment we have hardship, the moment we have setbacks. So we begin to fear the failure uh -huh, that, that, that's attached. And that failure begins to disrupt our comfort. And so we remain stuck in a place of comfort, all because we fear failure may be arising on the periphery. But, but, but our spiritual journey is no different because it's easy to become stagnant. And understanding the importance of finishing strong can motivate us to push through the hard times. I'm teaching this better than y'all responding. So can I set the foundation today? I want you to capture this. I want to build the essence of this conversation on this, this thought. Every Finish line begins with a single step. Good Lord, boy, you're preaching this already. Uh -huh. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 3, it says, Commit your actions to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. Every finish line begins with a single step. My God, Junior, you, you're teaching this thing better, better than the, than, than the folk are, are responding. Now, Nehemiah gives us the example of this, showed us that every finish line begins with a single step. Can I teach this? Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Camila already gave me permission. She said, teach us, pastor. That's what I do. I'm a pastor teacher. I'm going to do the very best that I can. Now, in Nehemiah chapter 6, mm -hmm, it's important to remember, we're talking about the rebuilding process. Everyone on this stream today and those who will watch it subsequently, uh-huh, are rebuilding something that's broken. And so we're discovering in chapter six, it was a long way from that day in Persia when he first heard the report of the walls were down. Y'all remember when we started there? And, 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 and it's been a long time since he took that ride out at midnight when he told no one what he was doing. Cause you remember that, you, you could be pregnant with purpose. And those trimesters of carrying that, 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 that vision, you all, it's a very important who you talk to, who you don't talk to. Because in the midst of that, something could be said to abort that, that vision that God has birthed on the inside of you. So it's been a long time since he took that ride at midnight. Uh -huh. It's been a long time since he faced his first level of opposition. It's been a long time since he had the haters and the, the, the naysayers. It's been a long time. Now he's at the end point, which is where we, we pick up the story. You, you, you didn't put your Bibles away, did you? Because I want to make sure that we get the language right. The walls are up. Everything is good. People rallied alongside them to build up the section of the wall that was closest to their homeland. So everything's moving in the right direction. All that's left to do is to hang the gates. Nehemiah chapter 6, verse, verse 1, we find 
Nehemiah here on the last lap. <laughs> he was reminding us that people who rebuild, they do it in a in a way that's that's excellent in a way, uh -huh, that 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 makes them feel encouraged, that gives them the power to know that everything is all right. Now there's so much words in in verse 15, you all, so we have to pause and and read it. Y'all didn't put your Bibles up, did you? Because in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15, look at what it says. It says, on October <laughs> the 2nd, the wall was finished just 52 days after we had begun. Y'all catch that? Uh-huh. 52 days after uh -huh, it had been, been done. Every finish line begins with a single step. It's done now. And all that's left to do are to hang the gates. Now, 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 I need to pause right here because there's so much potential right here. Now, 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 we may have never made it to, to chapter six. Mm -hmm. Had Nehemiah not stopped in chapter three to let us know that rebuilders let go without letting up. Mm, teach the scriptures, Clarence Edward. They know it's more important to delegate than to dictate or abdicate. Boy, you are preaching this thing here. Today, he sets clear objectives with specific tasks, picks the right people for the job. He was an example himself. He held people accountable and he gave genuine pats on the back and doses of encouragement so that people can keep moving forward. We may have never made it to Nehemiah 6, Verse 15, had Nehemiah not stopped in chapter four, that it's a reminder that you're going to be hit, but it's the yards you gain after you hit. Y'all remember that? Yards after, carry. I bet you watch the Super Bowl a little different. You don't just go down with the first hit, boy. You better teach this. No, you keep moving. It's the yards after carry that matter the most. He overcame obstacles. He knew it was the yards after contact that really mattered. He, he dealt with conflict head on. He made proper adjustments. He kept doing what was right and kept rallying the people to do what's right. Hmm. And so finally, we wouldn't have made it. To Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15, had we not learned the importance of the lesson in chapter 5. Y'all remember that? We build was never cut, but they can untie. Y'all remember that? I told that story last Sunday. Uh-huh, how I grew up with a guy. <laughs> I don't think he could tie his shoes. But when they were getting knots, he would just cut the shoestring off at the knot and then tie his shoes up halfway. And we know that if you're gonna rebuild something, sometimes it's best to just take your time and untie that knot. I thought I saw that in the comments somewhere. You untie that knot and then work the kinks out of the relationship. Uh-huh, they know that's a time to back off. Y'all remember that's a time to stand up? That's time to back off? Y'all remember that? Then there's a time to stand up? Uh-huh. Then there's a time to reach out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about that last week. Now, after all of this, Nehemiah's down the home stretch. Chapter 6, verse 15, the walls are completed. And here it is, the only thing that's left, oh my God, is to hang the gates. Oh my God, my time look good, man. I'm about to shout you in these digital streets. And he gives us Two warnings to look out for. Uh -huh. This is where I'm going to land the plane. I'm getting ready to land the plane. I ain't landing it yet. Uh -huh. When you're on a plane, you know, you have to descend. So they tell you, put away your electronic devices. Put your tray tables up. 
Pull your seat back to the upright position. I ain't, I'm not about to land yet, but we're descending. And Nehemiah shows us an important thing because <laughs> the last lap, digital passes, drop this in the comment section. The last lap is the most dangerous and the most difficult. Teach this, Clarence. It's often the last lap that's the most dangerous time, the most difficult time of the rebuilding process. You know why? Because the enemy, teach this, Junior, comes along and makes one final ditch attempt to throw you off so you can't hang your gates. You got the walls up now, but hanging the gates is most important. And the enemy sought to get them on side streets. Boy, you better teach this thing uh -huh, better, better than your folk responding. Now think about this. I want you to catch something. I want you to miss something. Now, most of you all who are, are watching this know without a shadow of a doubt that, that, that I'm, in, I'm in Chicago. Right, right. I need to put this back up one more time. Right there. You see that? I'm in Chicago. And the time is 11.20 a.m. Central. Now, I'm, I'm saying that to set some context because I don't want you to miss what I'm saying. Walls are up. Only thing that's left is to hang the gates. Now, in growing up in Chicago, I grew up on Harrison in California. Mm -hmm. True West Side. <laughs> and then, uh huh, uh, church was at 2809 West Harrison Street on Harrison in Chicago. We lived above the church. And then our church moved to the Austin neighborhood on Austin and Lake Street. Still West Side. Now, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm from Chicago, and there are some streets your boy ain't going down. It's not that I'm scared. It's the fact that I'm smart. I don't have to prove who I am by going down certain streets. So when I would leave Austin and Lake Street, uh-huh. I'm not driving down Mayfield. I'm not driving down Menard. I'm not driving down Massasoit. I'm not driving down Mason. I'm not driving down none of them streets. No, I'm getting on Lake Street or Madison Street or Washington. You know, a major thoroughfare. Uh -huh, to get me where I need to go. I don't mess around with side streets. The reason I don't mess around with side streets because that's where uh -huh, a lot of trouble happens. So you got to stay off the, the side streets. Y'all not catching where I'm getting ready to go with this. Stay off the side streets. Now, now, in Nehemiah chapter six, uh -huh, Sambalot comes by. That's a side street. Uh-huh, he, he, he comes by with his deceitful friends, <laughs> hearing that Nehemiah had already rebuilt the wall and all that was left to do was to hang the gates. And, and, and look at what they said to derail him. They said, come, let us meet on the plain of Ono. They wanted Nehemiah to meet them halfway. So they tried to trick Nehemiah with his own game. Let's sit down. Come on, Nehemiah. Take a side street. No, no, I'm, I'm staying on Lake Street. No, 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 I'm staying on Madison. No, I'm staying on Washington. No, I'm rolling down North Avenue past Austin. <laughs> See, often when your walls are completed, and the task is almost done, we're tempted to let up 
and then let some Sanballat come along the side to entice us to go down a side street, mess around, get a window shot out, mess around and lose our head, mess around and lose our life. No, you've got to stay off of side streets. How are you teaching this thing better than, 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 than your people are responding? He says in verse 3, they sent me this message four times. And I answered in the side where I ain't driving down, Menard. I'm not driving down Massasoit. Now, if you live on those streets, I know I ain't talking about y'all. I'm just trying to prove a point. I'm just trying to make a point, rather. But think about it, verse 4. He says, I answered them the same. And, and, and he kept the answer the same in the same manner. He continued to reply that he was doing a great work and I can't come down. See, it's the side streets that get you in trouble. Yeah, I know some stuff happens on the main thoroughfares. Matter of fact, uh-huh. I stay on the interstate, man, man. I'm, I'm, if I don't have to take Madison to come into the city, if I don't have to take Washington or, uh, or North Avenue, uh, or, 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 or Lake Street? No. I'm on 290. <laughs> 294. 94. Because I need to get there quick as I can and stay off them side streets. A fifth time, in verse 6, they sent an open letter. And then, uh-huh, he says that, that, that it is reported that if they say, who is they? It's always a they. The people are saying, they, the people are talking about it. They are saying this, they are saying that. See, rumors have two characteristics. Digital pastors, help me out. Rumors are always nameless. You ever noticed how the source of a rumor is never quoted? Well, you know the people are saying, Reverend. Well, you know what they are thinking, Reverend. Well, who is they? Rumors are often nameless. And not only are rumors nameless, they are often shameless. Boy, you are really teaching this today. What I mean by shameless, they're over-exaggerated. Nehemiah wanted to be the king of Judah. That was the rumor that they were throwing out there. And all this was, was an attempt to get Nehemiah on Massasoit <laughs> instead of staying on Madison. Are y'all catching what I'm, what I'm saying? I'm trying to help you to see this. They were tempting him to get him to leave the building, come down to the plain of Ono, which is a side street. Nehemiah says, I'm doing a great work. I can't come down. I can only drive down Madison. <laughs> I can only drive down Washington. I can only drive down Lake Street. I can only drive down North Avenue. I can only drive down Division. Now, I'm doing a great work, not coming to one of these side streets and get my head messed up. So, so what should be your response when you are confronted with nameless and shameless rumors? Think about it. Nehemiah teaches us what to do. No, he says right here, no such things you are saying, verses eight through nine. He says, no such things as you are, as you say, are being done. Now, therefore, God strengthen my hands. He deals with the rumor. He refutes it. He rebukes it. And then he goes on to refer it. Verse eight. God, I, I'm running out of time. I'm trying to preach this the best, best way that I can. So stay off of them, them side streets. Stay focused. I think this is a good way to land a plane. Not only does he encourage them to stay off the side streets by staying focused, he also encouraged them to stay off the sidelines to remain faithful. 
Now, now, what does this mean? What does this mean? I want to help you out. What, what, what does this mean? You stay focused, stay off the side streets by staying focused, stay off the side lines by remaining faithful. Well, let me go ahead and land the plane. Let me go ahead and land the plane. Now, Nehemiah's steadfastness. It teaches us the significance of remaining faithful even when we are enticed to take side streets. Even when we are tempted to go into areas that God has forbidden. He understands something. He understands that when we yield into temptation, it has severe consequences, not just for him, but everyone around him. If you can kick clip the leader, then the rest are going, going to scatter. Now, the journey illustrates that finishing the work of God before us requires us to remain focused, having unwavering faithfulness to God's commands and God's convictions. Stay off the sidelines and stay in the game. You have the walls of your finances. You begin rebuilding them and they are up. The walls to your marriage and relationships are up. The walls regarding your emotional health are up. The walls regarding your personal peace are up. The walls regarding relationships with your siblings, your children, are up. And all that's left to do is to hang the gates. Stay off the side streets. Let nothing and no one cause you to get off the expressway and take a side. Stay focused. Stay focused. And in addition to staying focused, stay off the sidelines. Hang the gates. Finish the job. You've come too far and rebuilt those things that were in ruin that were all the way around you. Finish the job. Finish the task. Stay faithful. Any athlete would tell you they don't like sitting on the bench. They want to be in the game. They don't want to be on the sidelines. They want to be in the game. So Nehemiah has overcome all sorts of obstacles and opposition. But in verse 15, the walls are complete. The enemy throws him another curveball. But he stayed focused, and he stayed faithful. That's right. Finish strong. Let me know in the comments section who's standing with me. Stay off the side streets. Stay off the sidelines, stay focused, hang those gates, 
drop it in the comments section. I will finish strong. Come on, drop that in the comments section right now. I will finish strong. There it is. Finish strong. Stay focused. Who's standing with me? Yes, I love to hear that. Stay off the side streets. Stay off the side lines. It's starting to come in, man. I will finish strong. Yes, Karen, I see you. Yes, Mila, I see you. Aha, uh -huh. yes, Linda, yeah, ha. Uh -huh. Yes, Eddie P, I see you. Yes, Dr. Bounds, yes. Lyndon, yes. Kim, yes. Esther, yes. Big Rhea, yes. Levita, yes. Jacqueline, yes. Waltrina, sweetie, sipper. <laughs> I hear you say, yes, I will. Cousin Betty, yes, I will finish strong. Come on through, Mitch, finish strong. Finish strong, finish strong. There it is, finish strong, my God. Finish strong, finish strong. Look at that, my God, yes, my God. Y'all coming through like true champions. Hey, thank you all.